to any other organizers or panelists on the line. When you are ready to begin the presentation, press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> We're going to start today's session. So, <clears throat> in yesterday's session, we were looking at uh, BODS transformations. So, in today, we continue the transformations with a new transformation called SQL Transform. We'll see, we'll see the new transformation called SQL Transform. So from tomorrow, we will be going to start with SLT, SAP Landscape Transformation. So click Start, click All Program, click Data Services 4.2, and click on the Data Services Workbench. Let us log into HANA and BODS. Let us log into HANA. We'll also log into BODS. So yesterday I shown you we'll see the execution of this. So if you execute one of the jobs,
mainly we wanted to see this uh, job on the selective input of metadata. I was supposed to show you this because yesterday the license uh, key was not updated. I think we used a different server, right? Yesterday. Yeah, we used a different server to execute. But in our server, uh, you can just test to execute. So we applied the license and it is working now. After the execution of the job, just execute the job. So it's successful. Please try the exercises. Again, uh, the license will expire again after uh, 45 days. So for every 45 days, we need to uh, apply the temporary license. That is why we are not able to execute in our server yesterday. But now it is applied, you can execute. Okay, coming to the, the next topic, which is SQL transform. So right click on the project, click new, click on the data flow. <coughs> Give the name and the description, click finish. So what is an SQL transform? Using use SQL transform to read data using native SQL statements. You can read data from native SQL statements. For example, <coughs> if I select this table, drag and drop this, sorry, if I select this transform, drag and drop onto the data flow editor, you see there is no input for SQL transform we only see there is an output. So what I'm going to do here is, we'll basically select let's go to HANA, let's go to any of the views, let us go to any of the views in HANA So I'll just select uh, Okay, so I'll right click on any of the view. And click data preview. And click raw data. So this is the output of the view. When I click on show log, click on show log, and double click on generated SQL. So this is the SQL statement that is generated based on this view. So I'll copy the entire SQL statement. <coughs> I'll copy the statement. So we're trying to read the native HANA SQL statement. I'll copy this. I'll go back to data services workbench, click on SQL transform, we need to select the data store, the data store here is HANA, 
copy paste the SQL statement. Click validate. Your SQL was successfully validated. Click OK. <clears throat> and click detect schema. When you click on detect schema, so this is the output schema. You see there is no input for this transform, but how am I able to read data is using this SQL statement. So once we read data using the SQL statement, so we scroll to the bottom. So you see there are different columns. All these columns are nothing but the output of the analytic view. So I'm trying to read analytic view based on these SQL statements. And based on that, I'm trying to read the schema. So I'll select the query transform. I'll drag and drop the query transform. Link SQL transform to query. And, send, and from here, I would like to distribute data to different target systems. <coughs> For example, I would select template table, drag and drop onto the work area. I select the data store, click on this, click, click on this icon, double click. So HANA is the data store. Or let's say uh, I would not like to take to HANA. I will take to MS SQL. I will take this to MS SQL. Owner is DBO. Table name is JED COPA underscore actual underscore data. And click OK. <coughs> and link query to table. I select the query. So this is the input schema of the query. I'll select required columns to the output. I'll select all the required columns, select and drag and drop onto the query transform. So these are the columns I would like to take to MS SQL. And this is the output of the table. So when I click on the template table, so this is the output. So based on this a table structure is going to create in MS SQL. You click on the columns, so all these are the all these are the column names. So I'll click validate, click on validate, click close, and click execute. <clears throat> click yes, and click finish. So what are we trying to do is, using an SQL transform, we are not actually importing the view or any tables. In the runtime, based on the code that is available, I'm reading the code, the select statement. So we're using the select statement, or you can write your own custom code. You can manipulate data by writing formulas. Click view trace log. Job is completed successfully. Click start. Click all program. <coughs> Microsoft SQL Server 2012 click on SQL Server Management Studio
login is best provide the password click ok expand database expand database let us go to let us expand best schema expand tables so the name of the table here so what's the name of the table jet copa underscore actual underscore data so I'll go back jet copa underscore actual underscore data jet copa underscore actual underscore data I right click on the table and select top thousand rows select top thousand rows <coughs> so here you see the customer information gross revenue net revenue then we populated this table using SQL transform into the target now here you also have template file template file is when we do not have the structure of the file you see use template file loader to load data to a file without having to create a file format so we don't need to have any format of the file just we need to give the path of the file the data is uploaded to the file and then you can use those files to upload to different downstream systems so I'll take a template file drag and drop I'll take a template file drag and drop link query to the file link query to the file so in the query transform we'll select a file on the desktop <coughs> so in the root directory the file names you can select any file over here I'll just create a new file I just create a new file <coughs> so here we have a file right click on the file click open so here we have the name of the file click close double click on the file so here we have here we have file name So I'll validate and execute click yes but we need to make sure that uh, we have authorization to write data into this file we need to have a privilege to write data into the because the file is on my client machine it is not on the application server 
So because the file is on the client machine, we need to have privilege to write on this file. Click finish. So completed successfully. We'll just try to open this file. So this is the name of the file. Let us right click and open. So once we open, a select. So this is, so these are the entries. So this is the template file. So automatically the data from table is exported to file. And here, this is the header. So what is the difference between a template file? What is the difference between a template file template file and file loader? So in the file loader, the file loader, we have the a structure of the file. When template file, we do not have the structure. For example, we copy this, copy the file again. <coughs> copy paste. Copy this, paste. If we open the file, I'll open the file. I'll copy paste the header here. I'll just copy the header here. I'll copy the header and paste in this. Let us click save. Yes. So in here you have, so here you have header of the file and here you have header and data inside the file. So now, Just give me uh, two sec uh, two minutes, please. I'll just uh, find out uh, why it is unable to connect.
think we, we got connected back. got restarted Yeah, just give me a few minutes. Uh, system got some down. System about down. I am going to restart the services of the system. Just give me a few minutes, I'll just uh, restart the system. Just give me a few minutes. 
suddenly it got uh, restarted on its own Okay, so <clears throat> so what we want to do here is <coughs> excuse me. So here we have SQL transform.
So here we have SQL transform. So we're basically loading data to the template file. So now I would like to replace this. I would like to replace this file with a physical file. So when we say a physical file, it's nothing but which already has a structure in the tape <coughs> structure in the file. Which is known as file loader. So this is nothing but to show file loader. So this is the, the file which has the structure here, but I don't have any data here. So in order to load data when you have structure in the file, so we'll use file loaders. So I'll go back. So instead of template file, I'll delete this. I'll choose file loader, drag and drop, data store. file loader drag and drop and select the file format we haven't taken any file format so I'll just take this file format so this is the file format select this file format drag and drop as target you can take this or you can use file loader anything is same you can use file folder file loader or <coughs> drag and drop this file format so in the file format click on show list of values and select the file format click OK and OK so both are same so you can use uh, either one of them so this is the target so to this target we're going to specify the path of the file so in the root directory select the file path click select click select and then file name the file name here is And this is the file name. Let's open this. So this is the file name. I'll select this file, double click. So this is the target. To this target, this is the path of the file. Query to the file and then validate. You can see the this is wrong file okay it's pointing to the wrong file Okay, so now 
is reading this input schema and going to write in this file. So I'll execute this job and click finish. Just I'm trying to show you the difference between table loader and template file. Table loader needs to have the structure already. Whereas template file will generate the structure in the runtime. So that is the difference. Table loader has a fixed structure, whereas template file will generate the structure on the fly. When the job is being executed, the job is being executed, at that point of time it will generate the file. But for table loader, already the file is already existing. <coughs> So once we go back to the file, we should be able to uh, write data into the file. The still job is being executed. The job is being executed. That is the only difference uh, between uh, template file and file loader. <coughs> Let this job execute. So meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, So the source system we know we have development quality and production. Even for BODS we have development quality and production and also HANA development quality and production. Now we are designing these ETL flows. We are designing these ETL flows in the BODS. Now how are you going to transport data models from ECC development to QA and QA to production or even HANA models from QA to develop, development to QA and QA to production. For BODS we will transport these projects. So basically to upload these projects into execute. So in BODS you can export this, you can export these projects you can right click on the right click on any of the project and export click export select file system next so here you have different projects what project you want to select so you can select multiple projects to the directory which directory you can select all this and you can write to a directory or you can click browse and then you can make a new folder on the desktop say bods underscore project 1 bods underscore project 1 click OK and then click finish so once you click finish the project is exported to the BODS project 1 folder. You know, double click on this. So these are the different projects. Where all the different ETL flows are stored. So what we can do this. We can re-import them. So you can go to the quality import import the existing projects you can select the file and select the file BODS projects click OK so you can select so what projects you want to add because these are projects are already existing that's why it's not allowing me to check this let's say if I delete one of the project if I delete this sales project, I'll delete this, 
click OK. I'll click OK. I'll click File. Click Existing Import Existing Projects. Again, select the root directory. Click OK. So now this the other two projects are existing over here. That's why I'm unable to import. So this is the project that we newly created. And click Finish. Or you can add to the working projects and click finish once you click finish the sales project is back so always you can export and import projects from workbench in order to work on the uh, UI part so once we export we need to check the dependencies now the ETL flow that is there in the development now we have in the QA system. Always this ETL flows need to point to the tables. So before we actually transport them, we have to transport all the dependent tables from the source from development to QA. And only once we transport and then execute the jobs in BODS and these jobs will trigger transfer data to target system which is HANA Though, so we need to remember the dependencies already need to be transported from ECC development to ECC quality so this will be taken care by <coughs> if any custom tables are there the transporting of these objects will be taken care by the source system team like most of them are ABAPers or the are the are from the database background they are going to do the transport and they're going to inform us okay all these dependent tables are moved to quality and now you can execute the jobs so these execution of jobs is done in batch mode so executing of these jobs is done in batch mode so the job execution is done in data services management console so we have shortcuts folder once you double click on shortcut folder once you double click on shortcut folder so you see something called data services management console double click on the management console provide the username and password click log on click log on so here you see administra administrator click on administrator so here we see best so you see the best here, here you see there are different jobs that are executed so here you can see the trace log, monitor log, performance monitor, the trace, the execution of the job, job log monitor. Any errors are there, it is going to show in job error log. So in the administer the administrator. you can see bad job configuration click on the bad job configuration in the bad job configuration and the repository schedules so here you can add a schedule what time you want to execute this job so you can add a schedule to this job click add schedule provide the schedule name can give the schedule name data services scheduler you can select the month of the day sorry, uh, day of the month in which you want to execute this job you want to do it once or multiple times a day and then you can apply once we apply this job will become active 
So once we apply, So here we see the schedule has been added. Now when, when the schedule has been added, you can see the status of schedules. So click back. All the jobs which are active all the jobs which are active <coughs> you can see the jobs that are active over here once a job is active the jobs which are active you can see in the so what is the day what is the time once once a day so these are the active jobs that are currently active is yes so if you want to remove unwanted jobs you can click remove or if you want to activate the jobs you can select deactivate activate is no you can select and click activate activate is yes means the job is ready to be scheduled so you can add schedules at the at SAP Data Services Management Console. And here you can add schedule. So based on the schedule recurring, the job is going to execute at this at the time that you specify over here. So this is nothing but the bad job execution. So any questions uh, participants have, please ask me. Sorry, in between, uh, due to fl power fluctuation, due to power fl fluctuation, the server went down. Still, the HANA system is down. It is not yet up. up. Only we made a BOD system up for now, just to continue the session. Give me another 30 minutes. Uh, we will make HANA ECC all the other systems as usual once i finish the class i will uh, look into that aspect and make the systems up so data uh, I mean data services management console data services management console is mainly for a scheduling of the jobs so you can go to the scheduling of the jobs to the data services management console we can provide what is the job name what is the schedule name you see in the bad job configuration once you click on the administrator administrator click on the bad job configuration click on the bad job so these are the different jobs that are executed you see all these are different jobs so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to you know trying to add schedule you can add schedule and specify the time in which you want to execute the job if you want the job to be recurring every day at the same time once a day at the same time apply the job 
play. Apply the job. Click on the administrator. Click on the repository schedules. The schedule just now is not active, so I'll just select this and click activate. Once I click activate, the schedule is active now. So based on the schedule of the job, the job will be executed at regular intervals of time.
Okay, uh, thank you everyone to attend today's session. So, just give me another uh, half an hour. You can access all the systems as usual. Uh, thank you and uh, see you tomorrow. Uh, we'll start with the uh, SLT, SAP Landscape Transformation. And participants who would like to uh, uh, go through the data provisioning topics, please go through the book HA350. There is a book called HA350. HA350 is the book for data provisioning. You can refer that book uh, for data provisioning. So you'll have different ways to provision data like BODS, SLT, DXC, Smart Data Access, Event Stream Processing, and then how to upload using flat files. All these different ways of provisioning data is there in the HA350 book. Thank you. So we'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Uh, we we'll start with the SLT topic. Have a good morning to everyone and good night. Thank you.